Can I ask you a question? And I want you to be totally honest with me. How often do you plan your lessons? Is it that you go day by day? Do you plan by the week? Are you planning on the weekends? I want to know. Go ahead. Put it down into the comment section. I want to know how long you're planning. And let's be totally honest with each other. I'm going to be honest with you when I say I've done it all. I used to plan a week by week. Then I started planning day by day. And it was incredibly overwhelming. And I felt like I never had a moment without my lesson plan book next to me. Lesson planning is the most talked about topic online. Whether it's what do you plan, how do you plan, what are the tools that we use to plan with, what is the format that we are using to plan with. But the thing that we're not talking about as teachers is how often we are planning. And the amount of time that we spend with our lesson plan books open up trying to figure out what are we going to do to make our lessons engaging and fun and ensure that students are getting the content can be very, very overwhelming. Now, while we all have different viewpoints and how we plan out our lessons and the curriculums that we're using and how we create our engagement in our classrooms, that's not gonna be the thing that we're talking about today. I'm not here to change your mind about the curriculum that you're using, how you end up teaching, or what you end up teaching. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about how to start planning in advance so that you can start taking back your weekends. Hey everyone, my name is Bridget Spackman. I'm a multi-age teacher in Central Pennsylvania. I teach fourth, fifth, and sixth grade learners across all content areas. I have a love and a focus for ELA, and I love to create rigorous and engaging lessons for my students that are authentic, while also ensuring that you are your most productive self. So if you want to learn more about engagement, rigor inside of ELA, but also how to be your productive self so that you can start taking back some of those times on your weekends, definitely hit the subscribe button. Also make sure to like this video and hit that notification bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. So let's dig a little bit deeper into this topic of advanced planning. And we're going to call this batch planning. Now, if you have been following Michelle, which is Pocket Full of Primary, or myself, then you know that Michelle and I have a podcast. And we've been talking for almost two years now in our podcast about what it means to batch plan. And we do this a ton in our business, in our classrooms. And so I want to share some of the secrets that I have used to start batch planning my lessons so that I'm not spending so much time planning out what I'm going to be doing with my students. So what is batch planning? For those of you that don't know, batch planning is when you take a very specific task or topic or something to that extent and you put it all together and you do it in one big shot. Now, you could think of doing laundry as batch planning. You know, you wait until the weekend when you have multiple loads of laundry and then you spend that day just running through that laundry and putting it all away. That's batch planning, okay? So what I want to talk about is how we batch plan and lesson plans. And I know you're probably sitting there saying, but Bridget, I can't do that. I need to make sure that I know what my students are doing. I need to make sure you know, I don't know what they're going to get, when they're going to get it. It's okay. I don't either. I have students that are all over the place. Some lessons go really slow. Some lessons go a little bit faster. But here's what I am here to tell you, is that the way that you teach, what you teach is going to remain the same. Okay? Your content does not change. Your standards do not change. The progression that you teach it in will not change. What changes is your students every single year. What changes is how you might deliver that instruction. So if you have kids who may need a little bit more support, you're gonna pull back. You're gonna take it a little bit slower. You're probably going to scaffold more. You're gonna do more practice lessons with them. You're gonna give them more opportunities to discuss. If you have some kids who are running through it because they feel really comfortable with that content, then you're just gonna go a little bit more quickly. That's what end up changing in our lessons. But what we teach and in the order that we teach it in never ever changes. So then why are we killing ourselves planning out our lessons every single week when we know exactly 
what's going to be happening in the order that it's happening, why not just start planning that now so that you can have a little bit more free time and during those busy seasons in life, like for instance, conferences, parent conferences are going to be coming up really quick, but during those busy seasons, you can forget about planning every single day and start focusing a little bit more on something different. So I want to tell you something. Last year was my very first year in really taking an effort into batch planning. I had been doing it a lot in our business with Michelle and what I do kind of on the side. I had been batch planning a lot of different things. And so I wanted to play with this concept of how can I batch plan and implement this into my own classroom so that I'm not having to take all my materials home and spending the weekend trying to figure out what I'm doing the next week. Sorry, I don't know why I giggled with that, but that's how I felt. So I have to tell you something, last year, I took an effort into really trying to see how batch planning could work inside of the classroom. I had been doing it a ton with Michelle with things that I had been doing outside on my business side at home. And so I wanted to play with this idea a little bit more of what batch planning could possibly look like inside of the classroom. Now we had talked about a ton that batch planning could be that you focus on a different subject area every single day. But I wanted to take it even further than that. I wanted to see what would happen if I planned out an entire unit in advance, maybe two units? What if I planned out an entire semester or if I had planned out the entire year? I know you're probably thinking, whoa, 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 that's a lot. And you're not going to start that way. You're not going to start with the entire year in mind because it's very, very overwhelming. Start with something small and the more that you get used to it, the better you get at it is when you're going to be able to grow. That's what we call in teaching scaffolding, right? <laughs> so Let's talk about how I ended up doing this. So at the beginning of the year, I had fifth grade ELA and I had fifth grade math. I only taught fifth grade last year because of some of the restrictions we ended up having during like the 2020, 2021 like school year. So I knew that I had these lessons. I was going to do these lessons. I was teaching whole groups. So it was a really great opportunity for me to just kind of dive in while teaching whole group because I only had one lesson to plan. So I started small. I started working with math because there were a couple of things that I knew that I had to do. So we have mountain math and we have target the question that we were implementing every single year. So I started kind of batching my mountain math and target the question. I have Schoology, which is my learner management system. And so I started creating all of the mats, all of the sheets, and then I had them all scheduled ready to go inside of my learner management system for about six to seven weeks. And so that allowed me to not have to focus on it. So when I came in on Monday morning, I would just hit publish, the students would be able to see it, and all the work on my end was completely done. Guys, it was a time saver. I was so happy that I just sat down and I got it done. Then I started playing with this idea, well, if I could do this in math, I wonder if I could do this in ELA. So I sat down, I started looking at my units, and if you're probably thinking, wait, Bridget, I don't really have units. It's okay. I got you covered. If you have a little bit of flexibility when it comes to your curriculum and what you're doing, I want you to go and check out the cheat sheet that I have available for free. And this is for fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. It is a unit progression guide, and it gives you all of the different units that ties to writing and also the four like reading standards that are going to go with that writing unit. And so if I knew that I had these, these units, how can I start planning them? Well, I started using my Bridging Literacy series, um, my unit series, which is something that I use inside of my classroom. I will leave a link in the description box. Again, if you have that flexibility to be able to change up how you're teaching ELA inside of your classroom. And so I took that series and I said, I'm just going to go ahead and start getting it all ready. And I would spend my time and I would create all of my different assignments. I would get them all ready to go. I would have all of my attachments. I would find the videos. I would upload the videos or I would create videos if I had to, and I would have it all ready to go. So again, when I would come in on Monday morning, I could just hit publish on the things that I was ready with, and then I could teach my lesson. So how can we get to this point where we are all planned out? We have our progression. We have our units ready to go. How do we get to that point? Like how do teachers actually do that? 
Well, I ended up coming up with five simple tips for this video. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you those five little tips and I want you to get started with them. But I want you to see if you can start pinpointing some of these items um, to help you in planning in advance. So let's go ahead and get started with the very first tip. So tip number one is I want you to sit down with your calendar, and I feel like this one is probably a no-brainer, but so many of us don't do it. Sit down with your calendar and also a school calendar. So whatever your school calendar is that tells you what dates you have off, what dates you have half days on, what dates that you will have your vacations, um, what dates that you will have different types of like field days or whatever it might be. But they usually send out all this information at the beginning of the year. So sit down with that calendar, and I want you to start putting every single date into your calendar. I know it's gonna take a little bit of time, but I promise you it's gonna be well worth it. If you have an idea for when you do different types of pep rallies or fundraisers, go ahead and just kind of sketch that in. Um, I know that when I taught in kindergarten, October was typically the month where we would have about a week or so where we would do a different type of fundraising activity. So I, you can go ahead and sketch that in. You may not know specifically the date that it's going to end up happening, but go ahead and just pencil it in so that way you have a good idea of okay I remember that in this month it tends to get a little bit crazy and I don't get a ton of instructional time because we know that all ends up happening if you know for a fact that that last week in December Lord knows we all don't do a ton on that last week because it's crazy then go ahead and start penciling some of those things in I know for me again when I taught in kindergarten we would always have an ornament day we would always have different um, holidays around the world that we would do an entire week on so go ahead and sketch those little items in so that you can have that before you move on to this next step. Now, I will tell you that I like to use just my normal calendar. I use the teaching on the double calendar. So we have our top teacher uh, digital planner. I love this planner. It is the one that I have been using for a couple of years now. So it's easy for me to just go ahead and write things in and then I can erase it, move it to the next one. But you, of course, you can use any planner that you have available. Okay, so now you've added in your dates. Step two is going to be to plan out your units. Now, I do this pretty simply. I don't go really big and fancy. I like to use a highlighter tool. If you're using some sort of program or something, or a highlighter or colored pencils, whatever it might be, I personally recommend using like an erasable <laughs> because you might end up erasing if you're doing this on paper. So I am a big fan of erasable pens and erasable markers. Definitely take those out for this activity. But here is where you're going to take your units. This is the what we have to teach, our standards, and then also the progression in which you're going to teach it. And I want you to start sketching it out. Okay, if you're a brand new teacher, I highly recommend doing this with a veteran teacher in your school. So that way you can ask them questions like, how long does it end up taking you to teach this topic or this topic? Because the more that you end up doing it, the more you're gonna realize which um, standards are going to be the heaviest and which ones are going to take you a little bit longer to teach inside of your classroom. So for me, I'm using my units that are in my cheat sheet. So I plan out all of my units. My units take me about four to five weeks to finish. And so I will use a different color for every single unit as I go through, and I will count out the weeks. Now, keep in mind that we've added in days that are off days, we've added in half days, and so you need to keep those in mind as you're kind of counting them out and seeing how long it's gonna take you to finish certain things. So I know that I have to make sure to add in certain dates uh, to finish, make sure I'm finishing up some of those units. So spend some time really going through, looking at your progression, looking at the standards, and you can even go back through and start adding in some of those standards. So if you wanted to say, I'm gonna teach this concept first, so questioning and inferring first, and then you're gonna go into setting, then you might go into characters and then plot. Go ahead and start writing some of those standards or just the names down. So that way you have a really good idea of what you're going to be hitting next. I know there's a whole controversy about which one do you teach first? Do you teach plot first or do you teach characters first? I want to know. Throw that down into the comments. Just curious, but it's a big debate. <laughs> 
So now you've spent a good chunk of your time really going through and identifying what you're going to be teaching and when. So I always start the year with uh, literature and then I will progress into informational and then we'll do some book studies, book clubs at the very end of the year. That's typically how I end up going about it. Um, and it's just because that's the way my district kind of has it written. So I'm using what my district progressions are and then I'm also using the units that I've created in order to help guide me through this entire process. The next step is going to be to add buffer dates. So we all know things will happen. You will get sick, you will have off days, you might have weather days, Lord knows what it could be. I mean, we've been hit with everything <laughs> under the belt for the past couple of years. So you're gonna need buffer dates. So make sure that you go in and at the end of every unit or at the end of specific standards that you feel like, mm, I think I'm gonna take some time a little bit and we're going to add in some of those buffer dates uh, at the very end of it. And you can actually write that in. Here's a buffer date. Here's a buffer date. So you might actually want to do this simultaneously while you're doing step two and step three, but I wanted to keep those separate so that you understood that, you know, on top of planning out your units, you really do need to add that extra time. That extra time, if you end up finishing a little bit early, you could always move on to the next one, or you could do some really fun and engaging activities. There's a lot of great things out there between, um, you know, mysteries and escape rooms, different fun, engaging activities that you can review with your students and just make things a little bit different. Because again, if you're doing the exact same thing every single day, it is going to bore your students. So having in some of those buffer times where you could do more fun and engaging things will always be really exciting to your kids. Step four is going to have a system to your planning. Now here's what I mean by this. And I think that this is something that takes time because you have to identify how you work as a teacher. And this is really, really important. And so it took me a lot of time to decide what are the things that I do and how do I plan out my lessons and how do I go about teaching my lessons? So we have kind of this big overarching view of what our units and our year is gonna look like. Like when do we kind of plan on trying to hit certain things? This is really going to help us keep on track so that if you tell yourself, oh, I'm going to, you know, make sure that I'm hitting characters in October. Great. You need to make sure that you try to stick to that. You're going to get to that goal. So there's always an end in mind whenever you're planning out and you're kind of creating your lessons for your units. So now you have the big idea, but now we need to go a little bit smaller. So now you're ready to start planning out your actual lessons. And this might seem like the overwhelming part because I think we all kind of in our heads have a good general idea for when and what we're gonna be teaching during the year, but it's the creation of the actual lessons that is overwhelming and takes time. So here's what I have to tell you. Create a plan. So if you have been following me for a while, you know that I have my bridging literacy plan that I have. So for me, Within every unit, I have four reading standards. Each of those standards has a plan, okay? I will read, vocabulary, skill, author's craft, grammar, reflect. That allows me to hit everything that I need to do. And I do that with every single reading standard. And so I have a very strategic plan. Now, if that's too much for you, too overwhelming for you, I totally get it. But then think about, okay, well, how can I try to engage my students? How am I gonna hook my students in the very beginning? What's gonna be the core lesson? How am I gonna have them demonstrate that lesson? And then am I going to have them reflect on it? I highly recommend reflecting because it's a great practice for students to do. But if you kind of create a plan for how you go about introducing a lesson, getting started with it, teaching that lesson, and then also having them demonstrate their knowledge of that lesson, but also reflect on it, you're going to have this system. And it's going to be a little bit easier for you to just kind of plug and play at that point. So try to sit down and identify your plan. Whether it be like Bridging Literacy, where I introduce my book, we read it together, we do vocabulary, we practice a skill, we talk about the author's craft, we go into grammar, then we reflect at the end of it. That's kind of my system that I've created. What's the system you are using, all right? If you don't like that one, I mentioned a couple 
throughout this little one, you can kind of go back and pause it and just listen again. So that way you can identify what's gonna be the way that you are introducing everything, making sure that students are understanding what they're doing and then moving on from there, okay? Now you're probably sitting here and saying, but wait, wait, what about my students who need extra help or I need to build in extra lessons? That's gonna come a little bit later on. I don't want you to stress about that. Right now, I want you to think just general, the whole class, what is it that I can go ahead and start prepping now and have it made? Because I have the exact same thing. So I'm gonna have students who totally get that lesson and they're gonna be fine. I'm gonna have students who may not understand what I'm talking about. I'm speaking a different language to them when I teach that lesson. And that's gonna be where I pull them to small group. And so during small group, I might do more lessons. I might read the passage again with them. I might kind of scaffold that process for them. But there are other things that you can end up doing with them during small group to ensure that they're getting the content that they need. So sit down and start kind of planning it out. And I want you to take your time with this. I want you to try to do it for about a month. Do four weeks of lessons and see if you can really do it. Now you're going to have to give yourself a huge amount of time to really sit down and do this. If you want to try to dedicate a weekend, dedicate a weekend. But I want you to really stick to this. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. You will want to give up and you will want to stop. But I promise you, if you stick to it, if you really push yourself and you get uncomfortable with what's happening, you're going to really see the benefits later on. So now that you have what you're going to be teaching, the progression, pick out the next four weeks, sit down and start to build your lessons. Kind of write it out. You don't need to have it like totally written out in lesson plan form. I'm going to be honest, I don't have mine totally written out in lesson plan form, but here's where this next step is going to come into play. So as you're sitting there planning out your lessons, I want you to think, how can I go ahead and start prepping and having most of this ready so that I'm not sitting there doing it in the beginning of the morning or during my, my planning period or at the after school times or on the weekend. So uh, I know not everybody has this, but I think after this previous year, I think we all are starting to see more of it in our classrooms, but use your LMS, okay? Go through and use that learner management system. Guys, I struggled when I first came to my district and we had to use Schoology. It was a hot mess. You look at my Schoology from my first year of teaching, you look at my Schoology now, and it is like a huge difference because it took me some time. And that's the whole thing with this is that it's going to be uncomfortable. But if you don't push yourself, you don't try, it's never going to get better. So use your LMS for this, okay? Start to create folders, start to create your lessons, get your PDFs together, find all of the things that you need and put them together. Now, if you really don't have a learner management system, then go into Google Drive and create a folder for that lesson. And so I want you to label it by unit. I want you to label it by lesson. And then inside of that folder, I want you to put everything that you're gonna need, whether it's a sorting activity, if you have um, an article that your students are going to read, the PDFs that the kids are going to end up doing, resources that you've created or that you found online, throw it into that folder and do it for every single lesson. So create a new folder for every single lesson. Now, I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, then I would need five folders for an entire week. I don't want you to, I want us to stop thinking of a lesson as the lesson that you do like right then and there during that day. I don't know about y'all, but I don't get through an entire lesson in a day. It just doesn't happen. I don't have enough time. I have about an hour and 10 minutes to teach. That's not a lot of time. And so for me, a lesson spans over a period of time. So one day might be a day where I'm just reading a text, engaging them, getting them excited about it. And then the next day, we're gonna do the next part to that lesson, if that makes sense. So there are multiple parts, but the lesson might last for an entire week. So start thinking a little bit bigger, broader, versus focusing on that one hour time period inside of your classroom. Because if you start thinking big, 
and broad, it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to start planning things out and getting them ready ahead of time. I wanna know in the comments if this is something that you're really excited about. Are you excited to start taking back your weekends? Are you excited about not having to plan in the afternoons, not being overwhelmed in the morning and trying to figure out what am I supposed to be doing today? Because we've all been there and I'm here to tell you that there is another way to doing it. There is another way to plan out there so that you feel confident coming in, you feel excited about the lessons that you're gonna be teaching, and so I am here to really guide you through this entire batching process to help get you to this point where you're taking back your time and your weekends. It is better, I promise you. It's hard, it's not gonna be easy. No one said anything was gonna be easy at any point in this video. It's gonna be challenging, but I know it's gonna to be totally worth it in the very end. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you wanna see more videos on lesson planning and batch planning and planning in advance, just let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. I really do appreciate you guys for watching please give the video a thumbs up because it does help it reach so many other teachers out there on YouTube. Uh, subscribe if you have not already, my friends, and then also hit that notification bell so you can get notified the next time I upload a new video. Thank you again, and I will see you all really, really soon. Bye!